So um, there's the topic load-based handover. Uh, again, if you would like to follow the slides, there's the URL also linked on the pre-talks for later reference. And um, right, get the cable out of the way here. So um, just very quickly, I would like to go through the simple handover process just to clarify what is going on. Um, so um, the MS, the phone, is connected to a BTS. And uh, the BTS knows what its neighbors are. So it's, it's a config item in Osmo BSC. It says, I have this and that neighbor on this cell. And this neighbor list gets sent to the phone by um, system information. And then the phone continuously monitors the, the Rx lev, meaning the receive levels of the neighbor cells of that cell that it's currently on. And the uh, current cell also. Um, uh, has the uh, receive quality and the timing advance information. And uh, so when a call is ongoing or whenever a channel is in active use, uh, every so often a measurement report gets sent. So this, at the beginning I was kind of confused, like what, what is MIS, MIS rep? But it, it just means measurement report. Um, which goes back to the BSC, and the BSC can basically decide then what to do. Say the measurement report says the uh, BTS2 is much better than the BTS1 in receive levels, then the BSC might say, okay, uh, here I have a channel available on BTS2, um, telling the phone to hand over to the other BTS. The phone would send a, a ratch which would be uh, detected, the BSC would then conclude the handover, release the old channel and complete on the new. So, so this is uh, simplified, um, left out some stuff, but basically then uh, the phone is on the other BTS and will again get um, the neighbor lists from that BTS and it could continue from there. So that's the, the basic building block of handover. Now, um, so um, the proper handover, if you have a distributed network, means that you should, on each BTS, configure its specific neighbors. So that if uh, a phone is at this cell, uh, it knows which other neighbors it can easily hand over to. It's also connected to um, identifying the cells with uh, RFCN and BSIC numbers that have a quite limited range. And, um, but the automatic, like the default behavior of automatic neighbors in Osmo BSC is just every cell that we know is listed as a neighbor. So you can technically hand over to any other cell. Uh, that would obviously break in two large networks, but that's the default thing to do. And um, so again, the BSC is free to gather any information that it likes, uh, RxLev, uh, the quality, the timing advance, meaning the distance of the current call and uh, whatever it knows about the neighbors and tells the phone to hand over to a different cell. Now the key thing here is we could take any information into account. So that's a huge topic we can, uh, f I don't know, depending on uh, whether it's Christmas or not, but you know you can invent anything. Now the really useful thing is um, that um, like uh, when you have a handover because of an Rx level to another cell, then you go to the other cell and then suddenly the, say the Rx quality is bad and then you decide to hand over again and go back to the first cell and then the Rx level is bad again and then you go back to the second cell, so you oscillate the handover, stuff like this can happen quite easily. And um, also what you obviously want is to balance the load of your BTSs, which is uh, what this talk is all about. So um, what we so far didn't do in Osmo BSC is take into consideration whether the other cell, BTS2, is already full. Um, we would just try to allocate a logical channel, and if we got one, then there we go. So in the end, we might uh, hand over a subscriber to a, a BTS and fill it up completely, and then uh, 
leave the others completely empty, even though their receive levels weren't that far off the first one to begin with. So um, that's where the handover decision two comes in to play. When uh, uh, Harold implemented the first handover, it was already structured into uh, do the handover and decide whether to do the handover. So we had the handover decision dot C and um, and Jolly actually uh, a while back implemented uh, an improved handover algori algorithm. Uh, we call it handover decision two, and it um, just like handover one, it takes uh, the receive levels, quality, timing advance, and interference into account. Uh, by the way, interference is basically defined as you've got good reception levels but bad quality. And, um, but it also takes into account the congestion of other cells. And uh, once you did a handover, or you did a handover and it didn't work, there are penalty time timers involved. So we try to prevent oscillation between cells. And another thing the decision two takes into account is the voice codec. So for example, if um, we're on TCHH and uh, the quality is a bit low, it would try to go to TCHF if there are free channels. Or um, like uh, tweak the codex so that interference doesn't have that bad uh, effects and would even assign within the same cell, like uh, a handover within one BTS. And um, yeah, so what do I have, do I have here? Uh, that's where I based my work on, on the openbsc.git Jolly Handover branch. And it's sort of an old tradition now. Uh, last year I talked about the dynamic time slots. Was it last year? I think, yes. That was also work by Jolly that I took over, and uh, handover is just the same. And uh, the load-based handover. So I forward ported it to Osmo BSC quite recently, and um, <coughs> There were some breakages in handover that have been fixed, like um, in Osmo BTS, we didn't send the system information properly, so uh, often the phones would actually stop sending measurement reports for no apparent reason. But now we're in the position to get measurement reports reliably and properly tested, and well, that's where the work is sitting now. And uh, ironically, I'm now mostly working on inter-BSC handover and uh, not the load-based handover, even though that needs some more attention, actually. So um, let's just look at the, the tweaked or the new handover config, because that tells you a lot about how this stuff works. So this is like on the network level in the VTY, this is the basic configuration is handover, allow it uh, or don't allow it. Zero is it's handover is switched off and one is it is switched on and then you can decide which algorithm. That's the new part. The handover zero one existed before. And uh, another new thing recently added is you have a global configuration of handover but you also have the same configuration items on each BTS level. So basically uh, if a BTS has no handover config, it uses the global config. But as soon as a BTS also has handover config, that applies for that BTS. So basically I could say uh, handover one on the network level, handover is enabled anywhere, uh, everywhere, and then I select handover algorithm two everywhere, but on some, say BTS five, I want the old hand or the simpler handover algorithm, so then on BTS five I pick handover algorithm one, and only that BTS would behave differently from the network config. Is this uh, for, uh, uh, for phones which are handing over from the BTS or to the BTS, or both? Well, it's mostly where the phone is at now, um, like, um, it, it depends, like in handover decision two, when you want to not congest the target cell, it would obviously look at the target cell's uh, minimum uh, desired free channels. Sort of, 
Uh, like no, but, uh, uh, yeah, but I mean in terms of this configuration, so like, for example, uh, if you have uh, one base station and all its neighbor, uh, one base station with enabled handover and all its neighbors have disabled handover, mm. will it uh, handover to uh, BTS with disabled handover, for example? Um, I mean, I mean, yeah, well, that's a detailed question. Uh, I think, I'm not sure, but I think we are not handovering two cells that have handover switched off. But well, the the default idea is like look at the cell where the phone is right now, and some few config items we look at the target cell that we would hand over to. But basically, if you're on BTS five and handover is enabled, then we would try to hand over. But uh, let me check later on whether we hand over cells that have handover disabled. I think we don't. So uh, Paul said uh, it would make sense to have handover from and handover to. But uh, yeah, well, I don't know. It, I think it makes sense the way it's right now. If we have practical concerns, we can certainly change it. But um, yeah, well, before we had just one global config, enable handover anywhere and have the same parameters anywhere. At least now we can configure each cell on its uh, based on its location and and so on. What does handover default do? Like it just, it's the same as saying handover zero or handover one? Or yeah, so. Um, it's a bit confusing, I think. On the, it's like, so this is the same code working on the network and the BTS level. And the default means well, default, the default value. Um, if you look at the help, it will always tell you the default. I think the default for handover enabled is zero, so it's off. And uh, the default algorithm, I think, still is one. So uh, the idea is, uh, assume that you have configured the network level. Then you can go to the BTS level and say handover algorithm two. And then if you want to go back to the network level, then you can just ha say handover algorithm default, and then it will remove the setting of the BTS level. Does it make sense? So there are default values, and then on the network level, you can set, set manual values, and on the BTS level, you can set manual val values, and to remove the manual settings, you can go to default again. And uh, the, the BTS would first look on the network level, and the network level would then go look in the factory defaults, the, the default defaults. And this applies to all the config items that come from now on, except one uh, which I may remember to point out later. So um, this is the handover, uh, the config we had all the time. Um, it's like uh, how large is the receive level averaging window? Like how many values do we average to decide on, uh, well, to have a value to decide with? Same, how large is the window to average over Rx quality? And then that, that's both for the current cell and then the same for the receive level of the neighbor cells. So that's just, you know, uh, by, how, by how large is the n by which I divide to average? And um, then power budget interval and hysteresis, that means um, um, how many, um, uh, I think, searches do I wait before I calculate the power budget? And then the, the hysteresis is again, uh, um, like if I switch to one cell, I want to obviously keep a distance before I switch back so if, if uh, like, you know, it's the common hysteresis uh, use case, like you don't just have a threshold value, you, you keep a distance before you switch back. Um, it's not uh, really that important here now. And then um, the maximum distance, that's about the, the TA, the timing advance, like how, how large uh, may the value become before I hand over it simply because it's too far away from me now. And uh, the handover two has the same, plus um, some more stuff here. Um, it does also switch on assignment or not within the same cell. Um, this TDMA measurement, I'm not really that familiar with, but uh, kind of it selects 
I don't know, let's look it up later. <laughs> uh, it, it also employs some minimum receive level and receive quality. Like um, if I'm in a cell and another cell is better than the cell I'm in, but I'm still above this minimum level, then don't bother to hand over. I'm good enough, you know, why hand over, why congest the hand over network thing. Um, then the AFS bias is about, um, so the, the AMR or AFS uh, codec works better than uh, the normal, I don't know what is it, EFR or what. Uh, so if we can hand over to such an L chain, we prefer it. So we just put a little bias on it, even though the, the RX level is what, 10, then say, oh, but if it's going to go to AFS, then let's make it 12 so it comes in a bit better and we prefer that. So that's a kind of a little tweak. And um, then the min free slots is about uh, congestion. Um, looking at it, I had a bit of a different idea, but the way it is now is that for each BTS or for all BTS, I can say, okay, I want to have at least say, three TCH H unoccupied. And as soon as there are only two free, then we would start to try and hand over to a different cell to again reach this three free uh, L chance. So this works for TCHF and TCHH separately. Then the next thing would be max handovers, like how many handovers to do I allow for a certain period of time? Uh, I'm actually not sure about the period of time. Uh, I think it's about how many handovers are currently active right now, yeah. So if if I set this to max handovers five, and five Alchans are already busy handing over, um, I think it's even intended on across the entire BSC. You might have to revisit that one. Uh, but the point is that, you know, I don't try to hand over everyone back and forth, and let's first con uh, finish a few handovers, then look at the load situation again, and on only then start handovering again. Um, then the penalty times, uh, like when I went too far away of a cell then, and hand over to a different one, let's wait a little, a few seconds before allowing handover again. Same for if handover failed, don't retry right again. And then failed assignment, assignments just hand over within the same cell. Then retries again is, uh, well, okay, if it failed, uh, don't retry, but retry like three times and only then wait until you retry again. It's like another little tweak into uh, penalty timers. And this last one is the one that um, is only existing on the network level is the congestion check timer, which uh, is configured globally. The default is 10 seconds, and uh, the now is just if you want to trigger it manually for, for basically for me, for the bugging. So that's uh, a lot of stuff there um, that is not present in the handover algorithm one. And um, so here was, you know, I just uh, dumped the um, the documentation in case there were questions. Maybe we can have a look at the TDMA here. Power budget interval, a stronger neighbor. Oh shit, I forgot. When I click, it goes back to the, it goes to the next slide. Okay, let me see if I can search here. No, ah, come on, JavaScript stuff. What happened now? Oh my god. There you go. Right. Let me try this. Oh, I can use, I remember, I can use this. So, where's the TDMA? This is hand over one, hand over two, AFS bias. It should be on the top. So, what does it say? Uh, not much.
Yeah, or we'll just pick four. Yeah. Yeah, this, uh, this should refer to um, measurement report uh, handling in the BSC. There are two modes of doing this. You can either take uh, all measurements and or you can uh, take a subset, but I don't remember why is this. Harold probably uh, knows more about this. Um, this relates to um, DTX to discontinuous transmission because in uh, if DTX is enabled, um, there are only some bursts which are guaranteed to happen all the time and if no voice is being spoken then basically the silence detector in the in the voice encoder will detect that and there will be no bursts transmitted. So of course if you do measurement averaging on those slots where the phone doesn't transmit anything you will get ridiculously high bit error rate. Um, so in if you have DTX enabled on a channel then you can only look at the sub values for, uh, for handover related measurements um, and uh, if DTX is disabled you can look at the full values. That's basically the, uh, the difference. So I don't really think there's m it makes sense to have this manually configured, but it should be automatically based on whether or not DTX is enabled on the, on the L channel at the given time. Um, otherwise, I, I, don't, I don't understand why, let's say, you know you don't have DTX, but then you restrict your measurements on some certain <laughs> slots on the subset. Why, if you have the other slots and you know they're valid bursts uh, in uplink, uh, why not uh, use them uh, for the decision? Another question there? I just have a, a suggestion that I might push as a patch to replace default with inherit. Inherit? Yes. But then, yeah, okay. On the network level, you inherit from the default? <laughs> so the network level may be, may be, may be a special case, but, but yeah, for, for clarity, I, I think that makes maybe some sense. Yeah, okay, well, in, in my head, the network level would be the default, and then above that, there would be another default, but if uh, you guys prefer that, we can always change it, of course. Um, we can also accept both. Yeah, we can have an alias. Even better. <laughs> but then we would uh, bike shed on which one we write back on the, the, on the uh, writing back the config file. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> and then you can set that policy back to default or to inherit. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, well, so and I think we call it inherent at some point then. In but. Inherent default. So uh, here what I mentioned is the default value that is going to be used on doing default or uh, inherit is always shown in the VTY config. So on the BTS level it would, if I had a manual config on the network level, it would also show the, oh no, I clicked again. It also show the manual config. Um, come on, help me out here. And uh, there was sort of an interesting instance that got me, uh, so I looked twice here on this one. So uh, in the VTY, to separate uh, range, we use the dash. Now, of course, we also use the dash for negative numbers. So this is actually negative 110 to negative 50. <laughs> so it's not, uh, it's, right? yeah, it's not subtract 50 from 100 or something like that. Uh, so I actually, I did deliberate uh, tests in my VTY tests to ensure that this works as intended, and it actually it does. Right, so um, how is the time? It's over. Okay, so um, there were some test cases. This is a really nice one. I think I'm not going to go through the entire one, but Jolly, when he implemented it, he invented this kind of testing script. And this is uh, interesting to note, like this test case 23 is a neighbor is your friend, and it goes something like this. 
Uh, Andreas is driving along the coast on a sunny June afternoon. Suddenly, he's getting a call from his friend and neighbor, Axel. Axel asks Andreas if he would like to join them for a barbecue. Axel's house is right in the neighborhood and the weather is fine. <laughs> Andreas agrees, so he drives to a close store to buy some tofu, some uh, uh, halloumi cheese. And so then here goes the real test. While he's driving, a different cell on the top of the store becomes better. But inside the store, the cell tower on top of the store has really bad reception. So it goes back to the distant cell. And going back outside the door, it goes back to the cell on the store. And then he goes back to his friend, his friend Andreas, and uh, says, Andreas wonders why he, still, uh, why he still has good radio coverage. Last time it was so bad. And Axel says, I installed a, a Pico cell in my house. Now we can use our mobile phones down here at the lake. And in my imagination at that point, their mothers and girlfriends call and they both toss their phones in the water <laughs> to have silence again. So, uh, <laughs> yes? Actually, uh, we could build a text adventure from this, right? <laughs> <laughs> A USSD in interaction, right, there you go. Um, so um, this is actually an interesting, more interesting test case is um, like uh, here we have a full red codec and uh, we would hand over but the other cell is actually congested so it has less than the configured three slots. So that's something the, the handover algorithm, the handover decision one wouldn't do. And uh, well, what's the test doing? It makes it creates two BTSs. It says I want uh, in cell one I want f four free TCHF at all times, and then it sends a measurement report that says well my current cell is uh, RX left 20. The RX qual is left out of the test, but the other cell has much better RX quality. But still, we're not uh, handing over, and then. As soon as I reconfigure the other target BTS to have to want only three free TCHF, and I get another measurement report, then okay, oh, then the algorithm sees uh, we don't congest, and then we hand over. There's a big discussion behind that, a theoretical one on whether you should prefer to uh, hand over or to prefer uh, to take a new call, new calls. So in, in literature, a book I read from, I got from Harold, it actually says you should rather favor handover because that's an ongoing call and you should not, uh, you know, you should not take up a new call and for that drop a, a call that is ongoing to ensure better radio service. But um, anyway, this is up to configuration with the settings we had before. And uh, what's this? Um, so uh, this one shows you that when we are on TCHF, we might go and change the call to, C to TCHH if the TCHF on the target cell is congested. This to show a landscape of what the, the new handover algorithm is capable of. So um, what's really still missing is uh, the work I did earlier from Jolly's branch, the dynamic time slots isn't properly integrated with handover decision two yet. So far this handover decision assumes a time slot has one, uh, it's either TCHF or TCHH. And uh, with dynamic time slots, of course, we could dy dynamically switch and this is not part, I haven't looked into how to incorporate it in the best way. And of course we need tests. And uh, I'm also implementing the inter-BSC handover at the moment, which is also interesting because um, that intermingles, like before we used the BTS numbers to hand over, uh, decide, and now we suddenly also have RFCN and BSIC of remote BSS cells that we need to translate to location area codes, and it becomes very interesting and intricate. I could uh, go on talking, but my time is over. So, um, any measurement reports? <laughs> My question is, is it possible to manually trigger handover from VTI or control interface? Yeah, that's basically the first thing I implement when I try to test it. 
I and even have a, a hand over any command. So I, I got tired of typing the time slot all the time. So I, I, I have my test phone there, or two of them, and I just type hand over any, and it picks the first voice call it finds and hand over it to the first free BTS it finds. Thanks, uh, but uh, what if uh, the base station you are going to hand over is, uh, has disabled hand over? Is it possible to enforce hand over there? Well, this one, um, the, if you disabled handover, that's in the handover decision algorithm. The handover code that performs the handover is not affected by that. So if, you are, if you're on the VTY, then basically you are the handover decision. And if you say hand over this outshine to that cell, then it's going to do it. And you can't disable that really. But yeah, you can configure Thanks. the handover algorithm to do what you want. So um, I remember, it's on? Yeah. I remember talking about this some time ago and asking people nicely to do it. It's amazing to see it there. Thanks. <laughs> but um, the use case I'm thinking of, there's a lot of different parameters to control handover. And I'm just trying to, in my head, figure out how you would do it when you want to only load balance. You don't care about Rx levels. Yeah, so the, the current config is basically this min free slots, like... Uh, so that will just take I, precedence I'm imagining over equal? I, well, if I were inventing it now, I think I would come up with sort of a, more like a weighted approach. Not This is sort of a, a, a hard barrier of I want two free slots. And if I have less than two free slots, uh, if I have more than two free slots, I don't care. I would, you know, not even bother to balance. And but as soon as I as I mm -hmm. have less than two slots, well, I would never populate the last slot until everything is full. Uh, sort of, I would more like favor, like balance it out with the receive levels. But you know, it's it. Uh, I think it's yeah, yeah. Okay, I see it now. Fair Sim enough. Simple, actually. Yeah, yeah. Say again. It's it's. Yes, uh, you're free to implement handover algorithms. I was even thinking of, you know, if we have multiple uh, MSCs or even b between multiple BSCs, coordinate those handovers, it would even make sense to have some, you know, external interface that has a central database. I don't know. That's on a different page. <laughs> so yeah. So the... Any other thing I wasn't clear about is AFS and AMR are more or less synonymous there, or what is AFS? AFS is AMR full, uh, full rate. Full speed, full speed, yeah, yeah, but it's basically full rate. It's AHS, which is AMR full rate. I tend to be. On TCHF and on TCHA, and that's the difference. Ah, okay. AFS and AHS. Ah, right, so you get a faster bit, faster bit rate and supposedly better quality. Okay. Yeah. Just just on AMR, uh, it doesn't uh, full uh, AFS and AHS does not necessarily uh, uh, convert into the quality because on uh, on AFS, which is a full rate time slot, you still could have the lowest possible AMR mode. So AMR modes, which uh, specify the 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 the, the quality actually are separate is a separate configuration so uh, there is a certain um, a mode of AMR which allowed on both um, full rate and half rate basically they fit into the half rate so they could, could be used on both and above some mode uh, only uh, full rate is possible for for those AMR modes but this is unrelated to handover so one other uh, sorry yes. one, one, one other uh, observation I had uh, which is just an interesting thing to know is that apparently uh, the configuration of neighbors um, is only a suggestion to a phone. So a phone can actually build its own neighbor list from various sources. So, uh, for example, it can remember uh, other... Um, um, other RFCs it saw before and add them to the neighbor list uh, and still measure them. I, I, I was surprised by this when I uh, uh, significantly reduced uh, neighbor measurements on, on a network and then I still uh, saw that you know, a phone is measuring other RFCs it wasn't supposed to. 
Um, so that's, uh, and, th and then I like Googled and found that phone uh, can uh, can build its own neighbor list from, from various sources, not only sure? from what's... Like, uh, from what I remember off, off the top of my head is that when we receive measurements, we actually index it in the neighbor list. Like we don't actually, the phone doesn't really send the RFCN, it just sends the index in the neighbor list, but I'm not really sure about that. I thought I had read something like that in the code. So, uh, well, yeah, maybe maybe we can look at your points, but I definitely, I mean, I, I read <laughs> that it is possible to, for it to somehow... Well, but if it's possible, the there's a difficulty there because um, also just recently I uh, realized that within even the same BSC, a uh, cell, a uh, BSIC, could get reused even on the same RFCN. So if a phone decides by itself who is the neighbors, then it could bring up a situation where it's uh, requesting an RFCN and BSIC that uh, it sees over here and the BSC thinks it's the other one over there. And so it, it should be allowed to do by the phone because the BSC has to have the prime say on who is the neighbor of who. Okay, time. So then, hand over command to whoever. <laughs> hand over detected. Okay, hand over complete. <laughs>